What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to use the extension extrude tools in order to extrude objects to where they intersect with irregular shapes. So things like if you want to run columns up to the underside of an organic shape or something like that, we're going to talk about how to do that. Before we get started, I did want to say that um, the SketchUp Essentials course, which is my complete course on SketchUp, up um, is closing this afternoon so registration for that course is closing this evening at 11 59 p.m. so if that's something you're interested in you want to get some really in-depth SketchUp training make sure you check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course before it closes tonight now let's go ahead and just jump into it all right, so for this tutorial, we're going to use the extension extrusion tools, and I will link to this extension in the notes down below, as well as to some other tutorials about how you can use this extension. But what we want to do in this particular case is we want to take a look at a way to create kind of an organic canopy and bring columns up to the bottom side of that using one of my favorite tools inside of this extension. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're going to use sandbox tools in SketchUp in in order to create a sandbox. So we're just going to use the from scratch option and I'm probably going to make this maybe a three foot grid by typing in three feet. We're just going to draw a grid in here. So to do that I'm just going to move my mouse over here and then I'm just going to draw a grid that kind of moves along like this. So just kind of a simple grid and then we're going to come in here we're going to double click in the group. We're going to activate the smooth tool and we're going to use the smooth tool in order to give this some kind of up and down movement. So just kind of an organic shape. So nothing special. Um, you could really do this with any kind of organic shape. This is just something we want to use as an example for this tutorial. And actually one thing that you should do before you do this is I would actually make a copy of this so I would take this I would make a copy straight up and down because that'll make it a lot easier to place our columns later um, but what we want to do is we just want to make that kind of organic shape with the smooth tool so we'll go ahead and do that Move this up and down move this down make this look a little bit more organic there we go so something that looks kind of like a wing and so now let's say in this situation that you wanted to create some support columns for this so um, if you wanted to make some columns that kind of ran up through this that gets pretty tricky if you try to do it just by drawing these shapes in um, just uh, manually so what you would do is you would come in here you would draw your column whatever that's going to be so maybe a maybe a six by six column and then you could push pull that up until it runs into this face but the problem is if you have a bunch of these there's going to be a lot of work involved in making this actually kind of line up here right so let's say I had this and I use the move tool in copy mode we're just going to make a copy all the way along here one thing that might be easier is just drawing a face on top of this sandbox and then deleting out the sandbox. That way you have a face and you're not accidentally inferencing the things or anything like that. Um, and probably what I'll do is I'll just group that. There we go. So now we'll draw our column. And so let's say that you use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy of this over here and then you typed in divided by, we'll say eight or something like that. So let's say you had eight columns on a shape like this, it would get really time consuming to come in here and push pull each one of these up individually so that it runs into this object um, so that you don't have any space up here. And you can see how even then getting this to actually line up is a lot of work. Um, so you don't necessarily wanna have to do that. Well, what we can do instead is there is a tool inside of extrusion tools called extrude edges by by vector to object and so what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to extrude edges so basically these edges until they intersect with an object so if I move this up you can see how this is going to extrude that through here and actually that's probably not going to work because the faces are facing the wrong way so if I hide this for a second and then look at this this tool only really works in the direction of the front face which is the white face so, and you can see how the white face on all of these is facing down. So we're just gonna select these, right click on one of them and do a reverse faces. So now the white face is facing up. And so what this extension does is it will take a shape 
and extrude it until it intersects with an object. So in this particular case, what that does is that intersects, or this extrudes this up until it intersects with this face. And you can see how it takes all of those different edges and extrudes them all separately. So this actually matches the slope of the object that we're extruding that to. And so that works not only this way with the one object, but if we select all of these and then select extrude edges by vector to object, single click, move our mouse up along the blue axis and click again. Well now if we look at these, these actually follow that shape so you can easily create columns or something like that that follows a shape like this one. And so probably what I'm going to do is I'm also going to say there's going to be something like this on the back side. So I'll just use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy over here. And then we're gonna select them all. But kind of a fun little bonus extension tip is let's say we wanted to take this object and we wanted to give it some thickness. So um, one of the things that you can't do with an object like this in SketchUp um, because it's curved is push pull it to give it thickness. But there's another extension called joint push pull from Fredo 6 that I will link to in the notes down below along with some tutorials about it. But you can take this and you can use the joint push pull tool to give this some thickness. So we could actually thicken this up using this tool. So let's say we wanted this to be about six inches thick. We'll just type in six inches, hit the enter key, and then we'll click to finalize this shape. Well then, you could come in here and you could select all of this. You could use the soften edges tool inside of your toolbar in order to soften those up. And then you could take all of these, use extrude edges by vector to object to single click, Move your mouse up and click again. We'll say no on either one of these. And you can see how you can use this to add columns and supports to a shape like this with very little trouble. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Remember to check out the SketchUp Essentials course tonight before the launch closes. This is the last time I'm gonna be offering it at the current price. So if you wanna get in before that price increase, make sure you check that out today. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.